we are here to uh, celebrate uh, two things. First of all, the book, The Walshus Lair. Uh, and we have uh, our distinguished author, Hattler Hatsum, here, who will address you in a, in a moment. And then we are here to launch the No Campaign Against Europe. Iceland is not going into the European Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is my pleasure to introduce Hattler Hatsum. Hattler is one of our most well-known journalist and author in Iceland. And he wrote this book. And let me tell you what Daniel Hammond said about this book. Because all we know that what da Daniel Hammond reads, he throws it out of window, or he says something <laughs> like this. Um, it's in the front here. Here it, here it is. You will see it. The best book to have come out of Iceland since the Nobel Prize winning independent people. Coming from Iceland, where we have the oldest, world oldest parliament. Our two nations, we are islanders, it binds us together, and I often think that the Icelandic and the English mentality are the same. It's the islander, independent and proud people. And incredibly enough, it's unbelievable to think of it. That now that we are, we are in negotiations with the bureaucrats in Brussels, <coughs> they say, hey guys, you have to hand back the fishing banks. Mm -hmm. And this is total madness. Mm -hmm. This is what they are saying. Yeah. And no wonder the Icelanders are opposed to it, but you never know. And they are putting up propaganda offices in uh, Reykjavik and in Akureyri. And they'll be uh, putting a lot of money into the Yes campaign, probably next year. Mm -hmm. So the virtue this is the one background of the virtue. Another very important uh, theme in the virtue is this, you could say, Orwellian uh, touch, so to speak, and uh, the future state, and what's happening, the trend, what's happening in, in uh, Europe, and Krimis theory, theory of what happened in Europe in the 20th century, which he claims is the no, no theory, the no theory. It's a special kind of mindset that is trying and is always trying to force people, how do you say it, under, its, under the wings, trying to control people with the authoritarian mind the authoritarian mindset. And Grimm is, uh, is thinking a lot about this mindset. He puts forward his nay theory, and uh, you have to read about it <laughs> in the book. Well, I'm extremely glad to be here, and also in the company of such sound people. As I look around the room, I have Austin Mitchell here, who's one of the most clear speakers on the European issue in the Labour Party and has been consistently for a uh, generation. Um, I see David Stoddart, likewise, the House of Lords. Uh, we have Christopher Gill, great friend of mine who uh, performed enormous service to us in the House of Commons. John Whittingdale, Margaret Thatcher's uh, private secretary and now chairman of a very important select committee looking into the whole question of hacking. Mark Reckless, a new member of parliament, Douglas Carswell. And I just simply want to say what an enormous pleasure it is. Uh, to, I've read part of this book. I haven't completed it yet. Um, it does say at the beginning, the first great Eurosceptic novel the world has been waiting for. <laughs> uh, I hope and will campaign uh, for Iceland not 
to join the European Union. I think it would be disastrous. But just as it says uh, on the back of your book, Europe's future is at stake, and only a fisherman can ice from Iceland can save the continent from a dark dictatorship. I, I warn you that a fisherman from Grimsby couldn't do it, but uh, you have, because you have the fishermen and the fish, a powerful weapon to use in the argument with Europe and the argument for staying out. It would be a folly to hand your fishing resources over to the common fisheries policy uh, and have them looted uh, by European vessels in the way ours have been. Uh, so uh, I think fish are a powerful weapon uh, in your fight. Uh, and I wish you joy of it. It would be disastrous for Iceland to join. Arthur, first of all, uh, congratulations on the English publishing of, of your good book. Um, I'd like to start by saying that I believe that it is because of the great effort that people like Hadler have put into the discussion on Iceland and the European Union uh, in the last two years that um, there has been a great turnaround in uh, public opinion towards the matter. Uh, that is also true because of what is happening in Europe. And I must say that it is uh, with great pleasure that I come to this house to meet uh, uh, with Hadler and all the people that are here to listen to the kinds of arguments we just heard, uh, which tell such a big story about what it means to be inside, and we too seldom hear about up in Iceland. We have a very peculiar political situation in Iceland where there is no, there is no true will behind the application which was put forward in 2009. <laughs> Nevertheless, the government just continues, and we now have a situation where, where Iceland is the one EFTA nation out of the ones that are in the European economic area, which has been in the longest dialogue for entering into the European Union. And we still haven't come to any negotiation conclusions on so many chapters.